There are many cities around the world that have inspired great works of art and literature. For hundreds of years, artists have come to Paris to live and work. Writers like George Orwell, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Ernest Hemingway, and many others travelled from across Europe and around the world to experience life in the city. The beautiful city of Prague inspired the work of Franz Kafka, and since the early 20th century, New York has been home to many writers and artists. London has changed a lot since Charles Dickens wrote about the city in the early 19th century, but the city still attracts writers from the UK and around the world. Of course, it isn't just great cities that inspire writers. Every year, people travel from around the world to the Lake District in the north of England to visit a tiny farmhouse in the middle of beautiful English countryside. Hilltop Farm was the home of Beatrix Potter. Potter wrote and illustrated the tale of Peter Rabbit and many other stories for children. Since she wrote Peter Rabbit in 1902, publishers have sold more than 40 million copies and they have translated the story into more than 35 languages. Hilltop has been open to the paying public for over 60 years and it's still as popular as ever. In 2011, there were over 100,000 visitors. Around a hundred years earlier, another female British author was at work. In the city of Bath, in the southwest of England, there's a museum about one of England's most well-known writers of the early 19th century, Jane Austen, the author of Pride and Prejudice. Austen wrote about this city in her novels, and it's a favourite location for film and television adaptations of her work. But Austen only lived in Bath for a short time. She wrote most of her famous novels in the peace and quiet of the English countryside. This is Chawton, a 17th century country house where Jane Austen lived with her mother and sister Cassandra from 1809 until just before her death in 1817. Today the house is a museum that has been open to the public since 1949. The Austin family weren't very wealthy and they didn't have a great estate. Jane's own home isn't as large or as beautiful as the homes of the characters in her novels like Mr Darcy. But the house is quite comfortable, pretty and light, and there's a beautiful garden. Visitors today can see many of Jane's possessions, including the desk where she completed her six novels. Jane Austen didn't become a famous writer in her own lifetime. Her own name did not even appear on her work until after her death. She wrote as a lady. But slowly, she has become one of the most read female novelists in the world. Since the early 20th century, there have been many famous film and television adaptations of her novels. The first famous film of Pride and Prejudice was made in 1940. In recent years, there have been many adaptations of her work, as well as films about her life. Kira Knightley played Elizabeth Bennet in Pride and Prejudice. And Anne Hathaway played Jane Austen herself in a film about her life, Becoming Jane. 
And still today, fans come to this quiet and gentle part of the English countryside to learn more about her life and work. Over 200 miles away from the gentle countryside and bright, comfortable living rooms of Jane Austen's world, there's another house with a far more dramatic and remarkable literary history. This is the town of Haworth in Yorkshire, in the north of England. And at the top of the steep, cobbled high street is the Bronte Parsonage. This house was the home of Charlotte Bronte, the author of Jane Eyre, Emily Bronte, the author of Wuthering Heights, and Anne Bronte, the author of The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. The sisters moved here with their father Patrick and their brother Branwell, and it was in this small home they wrote the famous novels that have sold millions of copies and have been adapted into hundreds of stage plays, films and television programmes. Haworth is surrounded by Pennine Yorkshire moorland, and this dramatic scenery was the inspiration for many of the Brontes' novels. Life was very hard here in the mid-1800s. The Brontes' mother died soon after arriving at Haworth, and two sisters, Maria and Elizabeth, died when they were just 10 and 11. The sisters were very close and rarely left the parsonage, as Anne Dinsdale from the Bronte Parsonage explains. What they really wanted to do was to be together at the parsonage and to write, um, and that's what they did. The sisters wrote in the evening, sitting together at the table in the small dining room. Like Jane Austen, the sisters didn't use their real names when they first published their books. They published their novels under the names Curra Ellis and Acton Bell, um, hoping that they would be treated as, as writers, rather than women writers. Their books were instant hits, and everyone wanted to know the true identity of the authors. So, Charlotte and Anne travelled to London by train to tell their publishers their real names. But tragedy was never far away. In 1848, Bramwell died followed three months later by Emily, and then Anne five months after that. Shortly after she married, Charlotte died in 1855. But by the time she died, Charlotte was a famous writer. Um, she died in 1855 in this house, um, and two years after her death, um, a biography written by Elizabeth Gaskell was published, The Life of Charlotte Bronte, and that attracted a huge amount of interest in the Brontes' lives. People wanted to come to Haworth and see the place where the Bronte novels had been written and to see where the family had lived their lives. There has been a small Bronte museum in Haworth since 1895, but it wasn't until 1928 that the parsonage opened to the public. Today, inside, visitors can see many of the sisters' possessions, including Charlotte's wedding dress, and many of the sisters' handwritten letters and manuscripts. Experts still come to the parsonage from around the world to research the sisters and their work. Every year we get 75,000 visitors on average um, and they're drawn from all over the world, from America, from Japan, um, from places in this country. The Bronte novels have been translated into, into over 26 different languages. They're read by people all over the world.
For many visitors, it is exploring the dramatic Yorkshire countryside surrounding the parsonage that really helps them to understand the powerful novels of the remarkable Bronte sisters.